Good day, Grade Twelves. Um, I have a request with regards to performance management. So let's get into the performance management for Grade Twelve Business Studies IE. Performance management. If we look at our micro environment, remember in your market environment you're going to be looking at quarters, and in your environment you're going to look at pistol. How you're going to add quality to those specific areas. So performance management in micro is looking at all the business functions and there are 10 business functions. The first one that we're going to look at is purchasing. So you need to know what your purchasing manager does. They bring in all the materials into the office or into the factory and they manufacture it. Key things that you've got to look at for purchasing in order to have performance management in this function is suppliers. Have a good relationship with your suppliers. Return on investment. As a purchasing manager, you need to ensure that you've got discounts in place with your suppliers, as well as economies of scale. The more you purchase, if you buy a lot of, the lower your cost is going to be. And then you are then going to impact on the quality with regards to costs, okay? Orders, how do you place your orders? When do you place your orders? How much stock are you going to have? As a purchasing manager, you need to work very closely with your production manager as well as logistics. Um, you will have cross-functional meetings once a week to make sure that you are ordering the right amount and that you've got your minimum order quantities. Because you don't want to over-order because things can expire. Things can go um, missing. There's a theft that could, um, that could occur. So you've got to really make sure that you've got your optimal ordering quantities. And then inventory control. You need to have controls in place and ensure that you've got your buffer stock, that you've got enough stock, and, um, and that will add to your purchasing function by monitoring this. So you're going to have processes in place. You're going to have checks. You're going to have meetings, open communication. Those are good words to use from a total quality management point of view for purchasing. Production. Production is where you're going to have a look at your production costs. So your factory manager needs to ensure that you have the lowest optimal cost um, in, in produ uh, producing your materials, okay? There's going to be health and safety. So you need a health and safety officer on board in order to add quality to this, um, this function. This product design. So you will be working very closely with marketing. Marketing comes up with a new oil for engine and says, you know what, this oil is so amazing. It will clean out um, your engine. You will then, as the factory manager, the production manager, make sure that you are able to produce what marketing has said um, with the specific ingredients, etc. There's also automation in your production facility. So when you automate, you also increase the quality because the room or human error is reduced. Things can happen optimally. You can have a lot more volume, um, that kind of, uh, you know, quality measures. Two very uh, methods that you could use in your production facility, and that is sampling. So you've got to make sure that you are sampling batches. So you're going to produce a whole lot of engine oils. Someone takes it off. The um, technician will make sure that they that it's exactly what um, we said that it was going to do and it's, it's got the right amount of ingredients. So when I worked for Bayer, we used to do that to Barack and Superdome. So our pharmacist would then take a batch on um, each production um, run and she would then test to make sure that there was the correct amount of vitamins in those effervescent tablets. So you would then just apply that to petrol. You're also doing inspections in order to increase quality is that you're going to have someone walking around um, at each stage, making sure it's signing off, and then you can ascribe to the ISO 9000 uh, standard um, where you've got a lot of processes and a lot of admin to make sure that that is a quality product. Remember, Grade 12, that each one of these functions, you can apply it to petrol stations, particularly to the head office or to the factories um, or to the stores, depending on, on what the question is going to be. Financial. From a financial point of view, you've got four objectives. 
for a financial manager. So the first is you need to maximize profits. So as a financial manager, you need to make sure that the costs are reduced and you're going to be talking to purchasing and to production. to say how can we reduce these costs? Your operating expenses are also reduced and you're going to look at different ways to do that. Are you going to go maybe more solar power? Are you going to have a look at um, your pens? How many resources do you have? Are we going to put a retrenchment strategy in place so that we reduce the amount of heads in our store? And then, of course, you could also look at increasing your selling price. Um, if you aren't able to reduce your costs, you can increase your selling price in order to make more profits. So that's how you maximize profits. So it's looking at your ratios, where you're going to look at total assets to total liabilities so total assets is what can i convert to cash if i am liquidated that i can sell off and that could be cash to my total liabilities and that is how much money do i owe okay so i always say to my great house just know that it's total assets to total um liabilities and the industry norm is two to one you need double the amount of assets to cover your liabilities okay so that's how you're going to talk about it. You're going to say it's two to one and you're going to ensure that your um, solvency ratio is two to one. The third objective of your financial function is to increase profitability. So your ratio there is profit is equal to, or your uh, calculation is profit is equal to net profit divided by your owner's equity. And it's expressed as a percentage. The higher the percentage, the more profitable your company is. Okay, um, liquidity ratios. You're going to look at your current capital ratio and you're going to look at your asset test ratio. Now, current capital ratio is where you look at current um, assets plus trade receivables plus your cash to your current liabilities. So, current um, assets to current liabilities, and you're going to get a ratio. Um, the industry norm is two to one. You need double the amount of assets to cover your liabilities. And this they again do just to make sure that you are liquid, that you have enough assets to turn liquid into cash in order to cover your debts. Then you've got your asset test ratio or your ratio. And there what they do is they actually take out the inventory. You take out your stock because it's not always easy to sell off stock in order to get cash. So they say that this um, um, ratio is definitely a more reliable ratio that um, your accountants would look at. So you've got your asset test ratio, which is your current assets, less your inventory or stock to your current liabilities. Okay. With regards to that, just some notes, a ratio less than one is considered risky by creditors and investors. If um, it's, you know, anything less than one is going to be considered a bit more and they're not going to invest. And it's possibly saying that you can your company effectively. What are some of the strategies that you could do to try and increase your ratios? Well, you can delay any kind of capital purchases that require cash payments. You could look to see if any loans can be re-amortized. That means you're going to start paying a little bit more to your loans. So you reduce your loan. You could reduce any personal drawings on the business. So the owners that are taking any drawings out and using it in their personal capacity, try and reduce that. Or you're going to sell any of your assets that are not generating a return. So say, for example, you've got a big car washing um, machine in your engine, using it, you, you haven't started, you go to look at selling that off because it's not generating any cash. HR is the next business function that we're going to look at and how are we going to add quality performance management to HR? HR is all about relationships. Please, you need to ensure that you've got good relationships if you're an HR manager, staff and with management. You're going to send out surveys to staff and management asking, are you happy? Is there anything that you need changed? You're going to relook at policies. You're going to be putting policies in place so that everybody knows what is expected of them. Performance appraisals is also part of quality. You're going to make sure that you are appraising people. 
You're going to be calling in your patient attendants um, once a year, saying to them, these were the objectives that you had, you've met them, therefore you're going to have a salary increase, or you haven't met them, I uh, believe that you need some training, or whatever the case is. Marketing. In order to add quality to marketing, you need to be innovative. You need to be coming up with new things all the time, products, new ways of doing things, looking at new ingredients. Is there any other oils that you could be putting into the market? Um, you're going to look at your electrical uh, you know, units and make sure your pumps are the best and the latest. Database. Make sure that your, the database that you've got on your customers, because you've run some competition, that it is updated. So you're going to get someone to phone to confirm that that is in fact the details. And you're going to make sure that your customers are satisfied. Um, you're going to send out surveys to see if they're happy, uh, you know, through a competition maybe or whatever the case is, but you need to ensure that there is customer satisfaction. Public relations, again, is all reputation. And public relations is how you respond so if you've got a complaint, I would say that quality management is to ensure that you are always looking at your social media platforms and that you respond quickly. You know, not to respond to something that's happened adds more problems, I think, to the business. So as a PR manager, that could be a quality you have, is that your response time is within 48 hours. And then you're always protecting the image of the company. Admin. You're going to be putting systems into place to add quality. You're going to have computer programs. So your database is maybe going to be automated, that you, um, they send out a birthday, no room for error, et cetera, et cetera. So your data really does need to have um, a process in place to maintain that data. And little um, keys to say, oh, you know, we have still haven't received this information. Um, and it's a little ping. I don't know if you guys know pings from Blackberry, but it's a little ping, as um, a little bit reminder to need to update that data. General management, your managers need to be trained. Your general managers need to ensure that they are adapting to their employees. So they're going to look at their leadership style and you're going to go on training for that. Remember, general management is always about, and I'll do a little song, pulk, da -da -da -dum. so it's pulk, Keys, da, 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 dum, jazz hands. So POLK stands for planning, organizing, leading, controlling, communication, coordinating. Then you're looking at discipline, decision making. You're looking at your motivation. So that the POLK da, 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 dum, stands for all those elements that general managers need to ensure that they are adding quality to. And I would say communication to people is very, very important. Motivating your staff, disciplining, making sure that people know what's going on. Risk management. Risk management, I think the five steps of how risk management has to happen, okay? So please reiterate, go over that. You identify the risk, you analyze the risk, you evaluate the risk, you treat the risk, you actually do something about it, and then you monitor and review the risk. So as risk managers, you need to ensure that your communication, in order to add quality, that you're to everybody, all the stakeholders about potential risks, that the, um, people are assigned certain responsibilities, that their objectives um, are clearly communicated with people about risk and that you've got to follow up. You've got to follow up as a risk manager, you've got to follow up and there's lots of signing and processes and that you um, make sure that you run processes for the rest of the company. IT, you're looking at hardware, software. The biggest thing I think would be cybersecurity from a quality point of view. What do you have in place? How are you responding to people that have um, computer issues? Are you automating it? Are you going online? Logistics is the supply chain process, and that ensuring that you've got goods and services, that's the whole chain from raw materials right through to your customer is your supply chain, and how are you going to add quality to that? And that's also including um, transport, you know, it's including distribution, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the consumer textbook, I see that they've got key total quality management uh, 
what's the word? Processes that you could use. So I'm just going to reiterate to that. It's sampling, benchmarking. You benchmark yourself according to industry standard, according to your um, competitors, your balance score. Your balance score card. Go have a look at my previous um, YouTube clip. Remember, balance score card is about being fickle, and it's all about the perspectives on financial, internal, etc. You're going to look at total quality management, which I'm going to give you some tips. Inspections, financial ratios, and continuous skills development are some of the strategies that you can use for performance management. Total quality management is about being very customer focused. So you are always going to be listening to what your customers say. It's about your leadership. It's about your managers having good leadership skills and you're going to train people up. Involvement of people, involvement of your staff in decision would ensure that things, processes are going to be um, going through more smoothly. Remember to involve your staff with any changes. Process approach, make sure that you've got processes in place. You've got little ticks that are happening and again, it will ensure that there is quality. Systems approach to management, continuous improvement, always looking to improve. Factual approach to decision making, making sure that you've done your research and that your decisions are, it's not just on a whim, that you've, you've got everybody's input into that and you're making good, sound decisions. Mutual Special supplier relationships, very important. Make sure that you've got good relationships with your suppliers. Grade 12s, that is organizational performance. As I've said, you can apply all these points to your petrol stations. Okay, um, so whatever the case might be, you might look at your petrol station and say, as a you're going to look at how to add quality to your cashier is budgeting is making sure that they are understanding the financial process. Um, the cashier might be also responsible for stocks. So you're going to look at stock rotation. Are you going to do first in, first out, last in, first out, you know, LIFO, FIFO, there are systems in place. You're also going to be looking at HACCP. If you're looking at your petrol station and your WIMPI, HACCP, H-A-C-C-P, is a acronym to ensure that or at all points that there is not going to be contamination. So what HACCP has is in your kitchen, you're going to have different color code, coded everything. So a color coded chopping board, the blue is only for meat, for example. I'm not, I, I'll do a little bit more research on that, but just to give you an idea, um, blue would be your meats, red would be your vegetables, green would be, you're going to have various chopping boards to chop up the um, different products in your wimpy to ensure that there's no cross-contamination. So that's another quality that, um, that you can add. Remember, you could also have your mystery shopper where you want to improve in quality. So you've got to, um, you pay for a mystery shopper to come in, they sit down at the wimpy, they eat, and then they're going to assess and let the head know what their experience was like. So you can use all these principles for your petrol station. Have a fabulous weekend. I wish you all the best with your prelims. I will look at insurance next week and they are for investments. If there's anything else that you need, let me know. Thank you.